The first skill we're going to be taking a look at is Orlando Canizales' ability to utilize lateral movement to set up his offense. They say every great offense must have a built-in defense, and by moving laterally to avoid punches, Canizales is able to create openings on his opponents from an advantageous position. Canizales, a real fine. You know, Very smart boxer. He doesn't waste a shot either, Ian. You know, when he lets one go, it's usually on target in, in this heat when you come from Europe. This is the fourth round. Hardy's done very well to get this far. He's caught with another right. He took it again. It bounced off his chin that time. In all three of these clips in his second fight against Billy Hardy, Canizal has set up his attack by moving laterally. But the most important thing to note is that he is moving laterally to his right. You see, the more common strategy in, in orthodox versus orthodox matchups is for both fighters to circle to their left, or clockwise, to try to expose each other's centerline. Here Canizales steps over to his right to get Hardy to turn to follow him, and as he does that, Canizales will then switch directions to attack the exposed centerline. And if we watch that again, we see Kenazal steps to his right. And as you can see, Kenazal's step to his right makes Billy Hardy turn to follow him. Just as Hardy turns to follow him, Kenazal switches directions back to his left, and this exposes Hardy's center line. And there we see Kenazal shoots the right hand on the exposed center line before Hardy is able to adjust his position when Kenazal switched directions. And as you can see, Canizales' front foot, or his line of attack, is pointed directly between Hardy's feet, which is actually his center line. So as you can see, he is completely open for anything that Canizales could throw. And the last thing I want to mention about this sequence is that since Canizales is the one initiating the exchange with lateral movement, Hardy is going to be the one reacting to keep up with Canizales, meaning Canizales is always going to be one step ahead of him. And I'll show you what I mean by that. As you can see, the first step to this exchange, or step one, would be Canizales moves to his right to initiate the exchange. And since Hardy has to recognize this, step two in the exchange would be for him to turn to follow Canizales so he isn't left in a vulnerable position. So step three would be Canizales switching directions back to his left. So naturally step four would then be Hardy turning to follow Canizales again to defend himself. However, Canizales takes the opportunity to punch Hardy before he's able to do that. Because Canizales was leading the exchange, he forced Hardy to adapt to him, allowing him to be one step ahead of Hardy. This concept is no different from, say, a crossover in basketball. Orlando Canizales understands the concept of changing your position to force your opponent to change theirs, and while they are changing their position, you should be punching. You know, Very smart boxer. He doesn't waste a shot either, and you know, when he lets one go, it's usually on target. So once again we see Canizales moving laterally to his right. And another benefit to moving to your right in orthodox versus orthodox matchups is that it limits your opponent to only being able to use the jab. Because you see as he moves to his right, the right hand becomes too far to throw as Canizales moves in the opposite direction. It'll also be too easy to see it coming so if Billy Hardy were to throw that right hand the distance is so far that it would be too easy to counter. Not only that, but as Canizales moves to his right, the left hook of Billy Hardy also cannot be thrown because it can't. he can't use it with any power from this position. He would have to wind it up and fix his position before he'd be able to throw it. So that leaves Hardy unable to throw anything but the jab. As you see, he throws a couple of jabs here and as Canizales continues to move to his right, He's forcing Hardy to throw only jabs, but we see that Hardy decides to throw the right hand anyway, and because it had to travel across his body, Canizales easily sees it coming and counters it. Now if you want a more in-depth explanation on the concepts I went over in those first two sequences, there's a fantastic video on moving to the right by my favorite boxing channel, Wilson Caden. I've linked the video in the description so you could check that out if you want. It's certainly not a 
in Orlando in, in, in this heat when you come from Europe. This is the fourth round. Hardy's done very well to get this far. He's caught with another right. He took it again. It bounced off his chin that time. But somehow he's got to start slipping those. Easy for me to say. Much harder for him to... So if we watch that again, we see later in the fight that Canizales continues moving to his right, limiting Hardy to only the jab. And the beautiful thing about limiting your opponent to only one punch is that you know exactly what is coming. If your opponent is limited to only the jab, it'll also be easier for you to counter. As you see, Canizales slips this jab to the outside and counters with his own jab, countering Billy Hardy as he throws the jab. So what happens next is that Canizales is going to continue moving to his right, and as you see it continues to limit Billy Hardy to only throwing the jab, as you see he throws a jab there, unsuccessful, and he throws another jab here down to the body, and after seeing two jabs in a row, Canizales is going to try to counter that jab, as you see he continues moving to his right, and then once he sees the jab come from Hardy, he slips it and counters over the top with a big right hand. And you see he continues moving over to his right as he moves slightly over to his right right now. And then Hardy goes back to the jab to the body, but Canizales, since he knows the jab is coming, is able to catch it and counter with a big left hook. Very nice boxing from Canizales. And here later in the same exact round, yet again we're going to see Canizales moving over to his right again, forcing Billy Hardy to only throw the jab. And once Billy Hardy tries to chase him down with the jab, you see Kenazawa slips to the inside and counters over the top with the right hand and follows up with a left hook because that jab is too predictable at this point. And just to reiterate, Kenazawa uses this lateral movement to his right to take away Billy Hardy's punching options because taking away your opponent's available punches provides a huge advantage for you. Whether you take away one of their best weapons or all of their best weapons, you're going to be fighting a severely crippled version of your opponent and if your opponent is limited to one punch like he billy hardy is right now it'll be much easier to see that one punch coming and you'll be able to counter it almost every time okay so next i want to talk about orlando canizales's ability to establish what's known as the t position the t position is when you get so far outside of your opponent's lee shoulder your feet form that of a t with canizales's feet being the top part of the t as you can see from my shitty drawing. This position is a highly advantageous position to be in because your opponent will not be able to throw any punches at you without changing their position, and you will be able to freely attack them with either hand. This is a position you see more often in Southpaw versus Orthodox matchups, but Canizales is able to set this up with a quick shuffle step while in close range on his opponents. Such a beautiful move. Well, look at the way he switches from head to body and back again, Tim. That's schooling. There's that step over to the right. He just hides on him when he's being Seabrooks in round three. He scored it even as uh, in the early going. Kind of Dallas had the best of the round, and then the chance will pull Hardy out for this because it's turning into a bit of a massacre. And I, I don't like to see one sided fights. So if we watch this again closely, we're going to see that in close range, Canizales is going to take a shuffle step to the outside of Seabrooks' lead shoulder. And we notice that Canizales' feet form that of the top of a T. And this is a highly advantageous position because Seabrooks cannot throw any effective punches here. He would have to reach across his body to throw a right hand, and his feet aren't set to throw with his lead hand. And then there we see... Canizales is able to nail him with a left hand right up the middle. Seabrooks is just the punching bag from here. And here's going to be another instance with Canizales getting in close range, getting Seabrooks on the ropes, and then here we're going to see him step over to the outside of Seabrooks' lead shoulder, forming a T position again when Seabrooks is caught on the ropes. You see this position really only works when Canizales has his opponent either standing still or his opponent is throwing punches at him. Here we're going to see Canizales set up the T position when Seabrooks is punching at him as we see the shuffle step again. And the shuffle step to the T position is effective to set up when your opponent is punching at you because they are standing still most likely at that time. And against someone with the foot speed of Canizales, you need to be able to keep up with his movement because he's constantly going to be changing his positions and is going to be punching you while he does so. 
And here's the best example of Kenazawa's establishing the T position that I could find. As you see, he works onto the inside and from there, he shuffle steps over to the T position on Billy Hardy. And fighting someone who's going to step around you, even on the inside, is just going to be an absolute nightmare for you to face. As you see, he nails Billy Hardy with a left hook because Hardy can't possibly throw anything. Okay, so next I want to talk about Orlando Canizales' pull counter. And before I go into how he performs this technique, I first want to explain that he doesn't perform it in the same way you'd see Floyd Mayweather perform it. The basis of that pull counter is using distance deception to make you appear closer than you really are. Mayweather would stand just outside of punching range and lean over his front foot to appear like his in range. When his opponent takes the bait, he then pulls his head back to where it would normally be given where he's standing and he's able to counter over the top. However, Kenizales doesn't perform the pull counter by using distance deception. Let's take a look at this clip here. We notice that he feints to his left and then we see Kevin Seabrooks throw his 1-2 in response. So looking to bait out the jab again, Kenizales moves left again and when the jab comes, he slips to the outside while parrying with his right hand. Since he isn't leaning over his front foot, he can't pull back without losing his balance, so he can't use the pull counter the same way Floyd does. So he immediately comes back with a right hand, which sends Kelvin Seabrooks down to the canvas, and if we watch it again, we see that Kenizales feints to his left, baits out the 1-2, so he's gonna try to bait that again, so he moves to his left again, and instead he slips the jab when it comes to the outside, and then immediately shoots the right hand while coming back. So instead of utilizing distance deception to be able to pull back from the jab, Kenizales uses his footwork to bait the jab, then slips to the outside of it and comes back with a right hand. He's certainly showing his experience here, coming back this well in round two, but he just took another right hand. Kenizales Here's a good example of how Kenizales uses his footwork to set up the pull counter. As we see, Kevin Seabrooks attacks him with a 1-2, which he fades away from. But watch what happens when he comes back. He moves in a way that positions himself just at the tip of punching range so that he's close enough to be jabbed, but just far enough to be able to see it coming because the distance between two fires is the distance between their lead feet. And since Kenizales isn't leaning forward, he can't pull back from the jab, so he has to slip it on either side. And as we see here, once the jab comes, he can see it coming and he slips it, counters with the right hand. And while that last clip wasn't the most exciting clip to end the video on, so let's watch this knockout. Fun fact, did you know more Americans die each year from cow attacks and shark attacks? Here's another one, did you know I just created a Patreon page? I figured if you're still watching this far in a video as obscure as this one, then you're probably a faithful viewer of this channel. So for that, I feel the need more than usual to say thank you for watching. If you feel generous enough to become a patron of my channel for just $1 a month, It'll go a long way to make sure I do more higher production videos more often. Don't worry, I promise to never lock any videos behind a paywall. Every video will always be available for free, and your name will be featured on this black screen that's usually at the end of my videos if you choose to do so. So as always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys all next time.